Here's a clip from Tara Buster with Tara Devlin. You want to get really um, sad? Let's watch. No, I know. Let's play FDR, the second Bill of Rights. If we, if FDR didn't die, right? I know. Let's see. It is our duty now to begin the laying of the plans and to determine the strategy. More, for more than the winning of the war, it is time to begin the plans and determine the strategy for winning a lasting peace and the establishment of an American standard of living higher than ever known before. This republic at its beginning and grew to its present strength under the protection of certain inalienable political rights, among them the right of free speech, free press, free worship, trial by jury, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures. They were our rights to life and liberty. We have come to a clearer realization of the fact, however, that true individual freedom cannot exist without economic security and independence. Necessitous men are not free men. People who are hungry, people who are out of a job, are the stuff of which dictatorships are made. And that's where we are right now. People who are hungry, people who are out of a job are the stuff of which dictatorships are made. And after World War II, after the carnage of 55 million human beings dead and the destruction, the devastation of fascism, of selfishness, racism, corporatism, we, the, uh, the uh, world, the United States, unfortunately lost their greatest modern standard bearer for democracy, FDR, who believed in democracy, even though he was born into wealth. He was truly the greatest modern president because we still have millions of Americans who live above the poverty line because of his policies. He brought electricity to the dum-dum sitting in the dark in Tennessee. He spread the good news of progressivism, that we are in this together, that there are some things that are worth more than money, and that's why you would bring electricity into the rural communities, even though it's not profitable. Right now, these rural communities would be sitting in the dark literally instead of the way they're sitting in the dark figuratively. You know, the irony of some of these dum-dums in these red states and these obscure back swill backwater towns that are all for Trump, these same morons scouring the Internet. So, well, first of all, the Internet, uh, a government R&D project research and development it was sitting on the internet you know using electricity brought to them by progressives on an internet created by government r&d railing against democracy against progressivism without a hint of irony when they would be sitting in the dark without with uh, 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 the ability to spread their conspiracy theories but FDR understood. We fought this horrible war. We defeated fascism. And how we build a lasting peace is by leaving no one behind. The stuff of which dictatorships are made. Holy shit. And here we are. Isn't it funny how the American, the whole American story, there's certain times where we could have taken... A, a different turn, like when Carter put solar panels on the White House and Reagan took them down, and here we are. Or when the Supreme Court overturned or, or, to, or told uh, the people of Florida uh, that they, they weren't were, going to count all the votes and installed George Bush into the presidency. 
in spite of him receiving fewer votes. And FDR's Bill of Rights, that's another turning point that we never saw to come to fruition. We'd be a much better we'd be a much better country, a much freer country. People who are hungry, people who are out of a job, are the stuff of which dictatorships are made. In our day, these economic truths have become accepted as self-evident. We have accepted, so to speak, a second Bill of Rights, under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all regardless of station or race or creed. Among these are the right to a useful and remunerative job in the industry, or shops, or farms, or mines of the nation. The right to earn enough to provide adequate food and clothing and recreation. The right of farmers to raise and sell their products at a return which will give them and their families a decent living. The right of every businessman, large and small, to trade in an atmosphere of freedom from unfair competition and domination by monopolies at home or abroad. The right of every family to a decent home. The right to adequate medical care and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health. The right to adequate protection from the economic fear of old age and sickness and accident and unemployment. And finally, the right to a good education. All of these rights spell security. And after this war is won, we must be prepared to move forward in the implementation of these rights to new goals of human happiness and well-being. America's own rightful place in the world depends in large part upon how fully these and similar rights have been carried into practice for all our citizens. For unless there is security here at home, there cannot be lasting peace in the world. One of the great American industrialists of our day, a man who has rendered human service to his country in this crisis, recently emphasized the grave dangers of rightest reaction in this nation. All fair-thinking businessmen share that concern. Indeed, if such reaction should develop, if history were to repeat itself, and we were to return to the so-called normalcy of the 1920s, then it is certain that even though we shall have conquered our enemies on the battlefields abroad, we shall have yielded to the spirit of fascism here at home. I ask the Congress to explore the means for implementing this economic bill of rights. For it is definitely the responsibility of the Congress so to do, and the country knows it. Many of these problems are already before committees of the Congress in the form of proposed legislation. I shall from time to time communicate with the Congress with respect to these and further proposals, in the event that no adequate program of progress is evolved, I am certain that the nation will be conscious of the fact. It breaks my heart. Honestly, I am uh, was crying when I first heard it. It makes me cry when I hear it again because of what could have been. And we can still be. That's our American birthright. The right to housing, education, health. We'd be a much better country. We'd be a much freer country. When you're out of work, out of a job, economic insecurity, that is the stuff of dictatorship. And that's what we're seeing right now. That's Twitler into a functioning society, a Twitler would never have risen to the, to the highest executive office. 
He is the symptom. Tara Buster is recorded live every Saturday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern at the RDT Daily Facebook and YouTube channels and rebroadcast on Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Progressive Voices or anytime on demand on the Progressive Voices app. Support RDT Daily and Tara Buster by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Tara Devlin. Remember, we stick together, we win.